Here we, here we, here we go. Woo! What's up, y'all? It's your boy Charles Gregory, the beautiful. Lauren Sizzle. And the beautiful. Sparkle. Sparkle, are you? A, a, a spark. Don't tell me. Which one? There we go. There so we go. Are you on four? All right. That, yeah, that's All the right. one. No, yeah. No, no, what mic you want, All spark. right. Microphone check. One, two. One, two. Four. There you go. We got Class Lake Spark in the building. We got Cl- Lady S. Dot in the building. And this What's is up, WPBMLP yo? Philadelphia 106.5 FM. We talk weeklies after the talk, man. And we got a dynamic show today. Yes, we did. This was a eventful day for me also, man. But you know, I got to ask y'all, how was y'all day, man? So, Sizzle, how was your day? My day was good. Like, I mean, well, wait, Yay. wait a minute. I, re- uh, I, re- uh, I, re- uh, wait I retract that. A my, good hello? My day was um, okay. It started off good. I had good intentions for my day, actually, because I, I got up. I said, let me get to these polls first thing in the morning. Yeah. So I was there at like 710. I was number 25. So I was excited about that. I said, okay. I'm number 25 at 710. Wow. That's dope. So people are getting out. And, and exercising their right to vote like our ancestors are so proud so proud definitely but um you know towards the you know of course there was some bumps and bruises in the in in the middle of that but after that it was okay it was okay you know that's how, how, that's about, that's how about you spark i had a good tuesday it was it was nothing nothing new going on just you know, regular day, but it was it was a productive day, like Lady S. Dot would usually say. Productive. <laughs> productive. <laughs> I like when my days are productive. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing new. Just just a Tuesday. Right, right, right. No doubt. Tuesday, yeah. productive day. That's what's up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lady S. Dot, what was your, what was your day? Man? My day wasn't very productive. <laughs> I had a laid back day, but I'm, I can say it was productive because I voted today. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's right. Yes, I voted today. So our day was... My day was productive just because of that. Awesome. Right, awesome. right, yeah. right, right. No doubt, no doubt. So we got a uh, classy lady sparkle on, you know, in here. You know, we got it. We gonna have a little good news and bad news. Is that what we about to have? That's what we about to get into. That's what we about. To, uh, All but, right. But first, I just want to say, can I say my day? Y'all want to hear? Oh my yeah. Day? How was your day? Yeah, so yeah. I don't get no love. <laughs> no. How is no love. She just was like, I'm doing good news, bad news. How okay, what you do? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go postal on me, Charles. Uh, yeah, Charles postal. Uh, How it, was your day? It was all good. Yeah, um, not really. But you voted. All, yeah, I vote. That was that we was all got on day. our stickers. Yes. Yeah, all day. Is, yes. Let me ask a question real quick. Is anybody wearing an I voted sticker that y'all know of that really didn't vote? Nah. You know how they be faking in front of you? Wow. You, you, you got to get the sticker. You want to get the sticker at the voting booth. Somebody mm. can find one on the floor yeah, that's, or something that's true. and be yeah. walking around. Cause I, cause I, you got yeah. fronters out right. there. Them yeah. Instagram yeah. fronters that be like, you know, you right. they vote. Because I'm going to tell you something. so lame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Because I, I have actually lost my sticker mm, mm, and found mm. someone else's who dropped it <laughs> and put it on and just put it on because i it voted on. right yeah. it was legit <laughs> it was a little beat up though but right. i mean you know mm, you know these things fall off they let you put your jacket on they yeah fall off, but I voted. I, you know what i had to truth be told i had to staple mine oh, to my wow. shirt i said you're gonna stay on <laughs> that's here. right because the that's hour right. after i put it on it was trying to come off i was like nope that's I right. voted today, okay. you know. That's that. right. Yes. Well, that, then that's a good segue into our good But news. I do a great segue. I do mm-hmm. want to shout out West Philly, my community, because at the time that I voted, which was about, I want to say like 6, third, it's about 6 o'clock. A.M.? This morning, right? No. Yeah. no. Oh, this t- evening. About okay. 5.30. Uh-huh. Usually, last time, like last year this time, mm-hmm. it was 70 people who voted. Wow, mm. how many this year? 225. Wow. So you was number 225. Wow. Yes. West Philly in the house. Nice. Yo. West Philly in the yeah. building, man. Yeah. I'm sorry, Clash Lady Holly. No, that's cool. Okay. For everybody who knows that voted today, this is for you. For anybody here who has ancestors who didn't vote and have the right to vote, and you're choosing not to vote, you are dishonoring your family. You're disrespecting and disregarding their uh, legacy, their suffering, feel. and their dreams. And These are the words of Oprah Winfrey. Whoa. Yes. yes. Whoa, I just whoa. put my little err uh, on it. Today marks the day of the 2018 midterm vote, and we're hoping this time the popular vote wins. 
Democrats continue to hold a double digit lead over Republicans in a generic con- congressional ballot among likely voters, according to a new CNN poll conducted by SSRS. Democrat Democrats benefit from a massive gender gap that has persisted through the fall. Women favor Democrats 62 percent to 35 percent. The gender gap cuts across lines of race and education for non-white women. 79 percent of them favor Democrats and white women with college degrees. 68 percent of them favor Democrats. Mm. White men are 57 percent Republican and white men without college degrees are 65 percent Republican. And that's most deeply behind the GOP. A strong support from black and Latino voters are 88 percent of black voters and 66 percent of Latino voters favored the Democrats. The biggest check on the Trump administration will require Democrats to control both the chambers of Congress, which will greatly impact immigration, health care, education, potential Supreme Court nomination and voting rights, among other hot button issues. So I hope y'all voted. That's the good news that we are out here and we're really like. You know, like the popular vote won in 2016. So let's hope that they do it right this time. Right. So your vote does count, especially the midterm votes. Spark, can you do me a favor? Yes. When you deliver good news, can you make it sound less like bad news? Oh, my gosh. How could that sound sound less? (laughs) I mean, I'm sitting here like, okay. You sound like my... I'm like, okay, we vote. You and sound like my kids. They be like, Mom, Hold you on. tell me I got a B as if I needed an A? Yeah. That's all you got? That's right. <laughs> That's all you got? No doubt. No doubt. Okay, here's some bad news. Philadelphia police officer Hung Nugent is under investigation for allegedly posting a photo of himself in blackface wearing an Afro wig with a plate of fish and grits in front of him on his Facebook profile page. Is that crazy? He's an officer of Philadelphia, y'all. This officer oh, allegedly, allegedly, God. allegedly took a photograph of himself in blackface and he posted it on social media. He has been placed under restrictive orders while the Philadelphia Police Department's Internal Affairs Division investigates this alleged incident. This is in wake of what the sizzle reported on of the Megan Kelly being cut from the Today Show on NBC. Like, why don't they understand what blackface was, you know? The Philadelphia Police Department is aware of the image. The depiction of this is offensive, and the department takes matters such as this very seriously. Internal Affairs is investigating, wrote a policeman spokesman in an email. Mm. So I feel that some of these white people will never learn that blackface, even for Halloween, is not okay. It's, not, it's, it's never okay. It's offensive and dehumanizing. Blackface during the time of the 19th century is where white people hucked and jived acting like black people Mm -hmm. or where we as black folk were not accepted on stage unless we performed in blackface makeup. Mm -hmm. One of the first blacks to perform in blackface was for a white audience was a man who invented invented tap dancing. His name was William Henry Lane, Mm -hmm. also known as Master Juba. Mm -hmm. Frederick Douglass generally abhorred the blackface. And was one of the first people to write against the institution of blackface minstrelsy, Mm -hmm. condemning that it was racist in nature with inauthentic northern white originals. Like, don't do it. So if that, so if we knew way back then when Frederick Douglass was against it, Mm -hmm. how come they don't know now? Right. What's up with that? Like, you don't know that blackface is a racist? No, they know. Like, come on. No, they know. So that was your bad news that a Philadelphia police officer put on his Facebook profile. Come on, come Black on, face. come on, man. This Philadelphia's finest, man. Yeah. Really. But the good news is we voted. Yeah, we voted. So we definitely there you voted. go. Shout out there. Class well, there you Sparkle. have good news and bad news for Classy Lady yeah. Sparkle. It's your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful. Lauren Sizzle. And the beautiful. Classy Lady Sparkle. Lady Esther, what we got coming up next? Next we got Cardi B Money. We'll be right back after this show. Hello. What's up, y'all? This your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful. Lauren Sizzle. And the beautiful. Classy Lady Sparkle. Man, I like that. 
I'm going to say, you know what? Maybe I'm biased with Cardi B, man. She can't do wrong with me. I'm sorry. I like that. We just had a, a behind the scenes, all my viewers, all of our viewers and all of our listeners, you know, who's tuning in right now and who will tune in later on for our podcast. Matter of fact, uh, make sure y'all follow iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, IG, Facebook, Twitter. This is going out to all our fans, followers, listeners, and viewers, man. Shout out to all our people who are listening to our podcast, man. The podcast has been popping. Shout out to iHeart Ready on Stitcher, man. You know, all that type of Spreaker, Spreaker shouting us out, man. It's just That's good look, all. man. But what, what we got next, man? We got the sizzle. We got the sizzle, ladies and gentlemen. Give it to me early. Um, So, Larsa Pippen, um, wife of retired Chicago Bull and Hall of Famer Scotty Pippen. She's filed for divorce after 21 years of marriage. Mm. So, the couple who originally filed for divorce back in 2016 which that was filed by by scotty this time they have cited it as irreconcilable differences as the reason so around the time that scotty filed for divorce in 2016 the police were called out to their home um twice in one week for domestic disturbances according to people the the recorded calls to police surfaced and Larsa was accusing Scotty of being verbally aggressive towards her. There was no mention of any type of physical aggressive. altercation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. Right. Right. Mm. So they <laughs> they reconciled back in February 2017 and they were trying to repair their marriage. Um, but it didn't work. Um, the couple had four children together and Larsa is seeking joint legal custody, spousal mm. support, and legal determination of the division of their property. Wow. Mm. I hate so, when people fight over custody, man. It's just so hard, man. Well, she did say joint legal yeah, yeah, that's dope. custody. I so. like that. She didn't that's say sole or full custody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm. the children suffer the most, though, yeah, they, all these divorces. They do. Yeah. They do. But, um, I mean, sometimes they suffer if. If they were to stay in the right situation, you got that like, right. True. You're seeing all these <laughs> things, and then you Definitely become got that right. damaged right. goods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but um, you just made me think of like Will and and Will and Jada, and they have their little red table talk. Um, they have their show, which is awesome. But I know you saw that where Will was just like, "We're not going to do this. We're not doing right. this." Even though he he was like, "I watched my mom be abused." He was like. We're not doing that. So, mm-hmm. shout out to Will Smith. Shout out to Will. Yes. So, actress Rebel Wilson, um, she's recovering from some major shots fired by Black Twitter. So, for Uh-oh. those of you who are unfamiliar with Rebel Wilson's work, she appeared in Pitch Pitch Perfect 1 and 2 as mm-hmm. um, Fat Amy. Um, she was in Bridesmaids as Bryn. And she was also in Night at the Museum as Tilly. So she recently did an interview on The Ellen Show where Ellen asked her about the new movie that she's acting and producing in called Isn't It Romantic? Well, she goes on to mention that she's kind of proud to be the first ever plus size girl to be to be on be the star of a romantic comedy. Um. Well, (laughs) I'm sure like some thoughts of come to you to your minds. But, you know, black Twitter. They had to step in and set Rebel straight. Right. And one person was like, she isn't the first plus size woman to play the lead in a romantic comedy. Queen Latifah and Monique have both played rom-com leads. You see my face? I was like, wait. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where is she getting this from? But she tried to come back at that person was like, yeah, I, of course, know these movies. But it was questionable as to whether, one, technically, those actresses were plus size when they filmed those movies. What? Or two... Technically, those films are categorized, billed as a studio rom-com with a soul lead. Cut it out. So there's man. a slight gray area. So <laughs> who's going to be <laughs> we in through the muck of gray? Right, right. Well, um, of course, Monique. She had to set her straight via Thank a tweet. You, Monique. Uh, here we go. Yes, yes. And she was like, Hey my hey my sweet sister. Uh, no, that's hey my love. Hey baby. Hey my love. Uh-huh. Hey my sweet sister. Let's not let's please not allow this business to erase our talent with giving gray areas and technicalities. Take a this. moment and know the history. Mm-hmm. Don't be a part of erasing it. 
I wish you the oh, best. No. And that was mm-hmm. she that was very well put. Yes, it was. Yeah. So she she replied to Monique and she said, Hi, Monique. Monique. It was never my intention to erase anyone else's achievements. And I adore you and Queen Latifah so, so much. I support all plus size ladies and everything positive where we are doing together. So people were still roasting her. Like after this, she started blocking people. But then, you know, later she had to issue an apology and she was like in a couple of well-intentioned moments hoping a, hoping to lift my fellow plus size women up i neglected to show the proper respect to those who climbed this mountain before there me like monique queen latifah melissa mccarthy ricky lake and likely many others melissa mccarthy ain't black ricky lake ain't black <laughs> Well, Rebel isn't either, so I guess she probably tried to just, you know. All right. Um, quick question: Is Queen Latifah still on tour? <laughs> or is the tour over? Who? Queen Latifah. Who? <laughs> Queen Latifah. Oh, Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah is she on tour? She you finished the shizzle. <laughs> um, because I missed. I think I missed the tour. <laughs> I know. If, I want to know. Lady Esther wanted to go. Well, she you might be doing another one. We're going to have to uh, follow follow the tour. Follow the tour. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm just going to move right along to the the next story. So just two days shy of election. This, you know, this is just two days shy of this election for today. Singer Rihanna had to put some things in order, okay? Mm -hmm. According to BET News, the Washington Post White House Bureau Chief, Philip Rucker, he tweeted out, Trump's rallies are unlike anything else in politics. Currently, Rihanna's Don't Stop the Music is blaring in Chattanooga as a sides. At, wait, I'm sorry. I can't see. As aides toss free Trump t-shirts into the crowd like a wow. ball game. Wow. Everyone's loving it. Mm. Except for Rihanna because she fired back via a twi- uh, tweet to Philip Rucker and said, not for much longer, me nor my people would ever be at or around one of these tragic rally rallies. So thanks for the heads up, Philip. I know so that's right. Then, he played himself. Yes, I don't know why he tweeted that out, but he did. And Rihanna's legal team sent a cease and desist Desi- letter Hello. to Trump's mm-hmm. legal team. Get him. Mm-hmm. And this is not the first time because Pharrell's lawyer sent a cease and desist letter to Trump's legal team because wow. he Good. was playing happy at a Midwest mm. rally. Good. So when the right (laughs) exactly see I was just getting ready to get to that part yes because in the letter um, that Pharrell's lawyer wrote he said on the day of the mass murder of eleven human beings at the hands of a deranged nationalist you play this song happy to a crowd at a political event Mm -hmm. in Indiana Mm -hmm. so many people are like you know like Sparkle they asking the question. Why is Trump playing black music at these rallies where you have KKK members oh and white supremacists God. as attendees? Oh my goodness gracious, boy. He's a nationalist. That's why he's yes. No, they're terrorists. <laughs> Stop wow. calling it the way it is. Listen, nationalist is just calling it if you're agnostic, mm-hmm. atheist. Like, it's just, it's the same. I'm agreeing yeah. with you. I'm, I'm not sure. Like, yeah. you know. They don't. We're not welcome here. Yeah. But they're playing our music. Like, okay. Anyway, finally, moving right along. I have a word to give out. Word to give out. So, the Celebrity Sizzle Award of the Week goes to rapper Kodak Black, who okay. plans to build a school in Haiti. So according to Double XL, nice. since his release from jail back in August, he plans to get back to the community and he has been doing some things. His parents migrated from the U.S., migrated to the U.S. from Haiti before he was born. I'm glad that you yeah. said that. Yeah. Go ahead. What? That's why he wanted to Yes, do because there. I was going to say he something. He could be doing the school here. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm glad you said it because that's is, where he's from. Yeah, he is doing some things yeah. here. Because last month he donated $10,000 to the Jack and Jill Children's Center in Shout Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then two weeks ago he donated 2500 to the family of fallen South Carolina Philadelphia officer Terrence Carraway. Mm. Yeah, so he is he is doing some things. Shout here. out to Kodak Black, man. Mm, I'm, I wasn't really a fan of him. I'm a fan of his now, man. Like this is my thing, right? If you're gonna do music and you're gonna be part of the culture, man, at least give back to the culture. Right. right if you're gonna do all of the negative 
actions that rap allegedly, you know, endorses, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At least give back and do the right things, man. Because otherwise, you're just a detriment to the to the community. And so, I'm a big proponent of being able to, you know, be in hip hop and do and say whatever you want in hip hop, as long as you give back too. Man, that's, that's part of the culture. You can't take away the culture, man. It is what it is. Yeah. They've been so, having a hard time over in Haiti, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. For, for I a while. I appreciate that award, too. Yeah. yeah, sure. That was what's yeah. up. I never knew that. And mm-hmm. they don't promote that kind of stuff. They don't. You know what I mean? Absolutely, they absolutely. Mm-hmm. They'll say if you got locked up. Woo! But they won't right. tell you that. So, was that the sizzle? That was the sizzle. So, that was the sizzle, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful. Lauren Sizzle. And the beautiful. Classy Lady Sparkle. Lady S. Dot. What we got coming up next? Focus by her. Focus by her. We'll be right back okay. at this, y'all. Hello. Woo! What's up, y'all? This your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle and the beautiful classy lady Sparkle is gone yes. again. Can I just say that's my song? I di- cannot. I, I like. I I like her. Classy. I like lady. her. Who? That song. Like Focus. I, yeah. Who? Who? Yeah. Who? Who was that by? Her. Her. H e r. Her. Oh yeah, I heard of her. Yeah, I heard of her. And uh, that's what's up, man. You know, I like her. I like that was a nice. That was a nice line. It was pretty cool, man. So, man, as you know, eight thirty. We always get to our favorite part of the show. Seven thirty. Yeah. Seven thirty. You know what? They didn't turn the times back on some of these things. I was it's like, it's eight thirty. I'm like, hold yeah, up, we still here? Right. I was about to say, we still here? You know, and um. Yeah. I'm excited. You know, this is one of those things that, you know, I get excited for because I get to the interviews. And this interview is going to be a pretty dynamic one. I heard so many things about this young lady, you know, and how much of a powerhouse she is and the stuff that she's doing for the community. You know, because, you know, sometimes we like to really get the information and give the information. So before I go into my little spiel, says, who do we have today? Who do we have today? So we have the beautiful Miss Lynette Medley. She is the founder and CEO of No More Secrets Mind, Body, Spirit, Inc. She earned her bachelor's degree in ment- mental mental behavior sciences from mm. De- Drexel University. Her master's Dope. degree from Widener University in human sexuality. Her personal, her personal inspiration and authentic approach to creating safe spaces for all to heal and grow regardless of their past or present experiences is unwavering. She unselfishly gives of her time, energy, and resources on a daily basis to aid those in need of reassurance, all while facing her own personal challenges. Lynette understands what it's like to feel misunderstood or voiceless, so she purposely engages in crucial conversations with persons of all ages to allow them the freedom of embracing their true selves and identities. She's a positive speaker, a dream builder, author, self-love coach, Mm award-winning sexuality awareness educator, counselor. Welcome to the show, Miss Lynette Medley. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Wow, fantastic. Now, that behavioral health thing, now it's starting to make sense why you're going Mm. down the path that you're going down, you know. That's my background, behavioral health, you know. And so... You know, when you talk about just understanding the people and and understanding the why, that's always the big thing, the why, Why. right? People do what they do, but you want to know why, right? And so let's talk a little bit about, you know, your travels and, you know, your education and why did you select certain, you know, um, platforms and, you know, the background. Okay, so um, my travels, I guess, uh, growing up in a truly religious background i think hold on real quick i hate i hate to I hate to hurt hate to cut you off but just real quick i see that you voted where did you get that sticker from well, that, that <laughs> i voted sticker is hot i think <laughs> well i live in delaware okay, so, okay. My offices okay. Are in philly. i'm a philly girl there i just goes, relocated okay. to delaware but yeah. my offices are still in philly so yeah. have to you know vote no where your, you yeah know, it doesn't house matter is. where doesn't you are there you go. Shout out so for that's you where i know there yeah you go. so no we were doubt. out there early voting yeah so um awesome. yeah background so i grew up in a religious background and um i just realized a lot many times decisions i made were based on uh not understanding who i was as a true 
individual and right. my authenticity. As I tell people, uh, when we don't create spaces and places for people to live authentically, we create sub-communities. Mm -hmm. And people look at me like, hmm. I said, you know the person you are when you're not around your mom, your church, your family. You know that mm -hmm. person who you really mm -hmm. are who you are. Right, right, right. So I think that travel and my own experiences um, allowed me the opportunity to say, hey, I'm not going to be complicit like everybody else. Um, religion, um, behavioral health, mental health, all of them integrate into sexual health. Right, and right. somehow we kind of leave that outside and yeah, leave it yeah, on yeah. a shelf and integrate it when a, a pathology or negative mm -hmm. um, connotation comes apart. Mm -hmm. But I think that once we add it to the table as part of the meal, then we can mm -hmm. address things holistically and actually feed people and nourish people in their own entirety. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now you have such a, a, a wealth of information in you. Mm -hmm. What 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 is your actual title for everything that you do? Hmm. Yeah. There is no title. Yeah. <laughs> I think what happens is that um, I've kind of, I, as I tell people, I've manifested this lane and kind of started owning it because there was no space to do this. Right, right, so right. I guess the title is most people usually call me a, a, a education and sex coach okay. um, and educator. And I started using educator instead of therapist. I dropped okay. my therapist role a couple of years ago. Uh, about two years ago is when I took the therapist off because people, of, um, black folk and people of color don't like to feel like they're going to therapy. Why? And, and, and the reason mm -hmm. is, and I did therapy for many years. I've right, been a director right. of diversity and inclusion, director of outpatient services, all of those. But I realized that as a therapist, sometimes I would have conversations with people and bring um, things up and, you know, want to add stuff to their goals and their treatment plans. But then I had no one to refer them to. Right. Mm -hmm. I had no one to really implement the, the, the procedures and yeah. um, steps that I was initiating as far as them, you know, packing their suitcases for the journey. So I said, uh -huh. you know what? I need to be that person because. They need to refer them to me because I know the action steps and I know how to walk alongside and help them unpack and pack their journey and unpack and pack their suitcase for their particular journey mm -hmm. and not try to pack it and act like they're going on my journey and going to my destination. Fantastic. Right. So before I unpack more of what you're doing, okay. right, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, you made the statement that, you know, black people, they feel are they are they are kind of intimidated to seek out a therapist. Why do you think that is? Why do you think a lot of black people have a problem with feeling that, you know, um, I need to go to somebody to talk about the issues that I'm having or mm -hmm. the mental challenges that I'm having when we don't have a problem calling our best friend and getting wrong information. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? I think it's because it's so stigmatized in our community. If you talk about our theological underpinnings, when you're talking about our religion, mm -hmm. pastors say, we'll pray it away, you right, know, right. you know, um, take it to God, get on your knees. And then also our friends and everybody else, we don't want to seem like we're vulnerable. Let's just be honest. Black mm -hmm. folk, we don't want to be vulnerable. We got to yeah, be strong. We right. got to have an S on our chest at all time. Mm -hmm. So once I go to therapy, that means I have a pathology. There's something wrong with me, something that needs right. to be fixed. And it's no way I'm going to tell my boy, anybody else or my girlfriend, I'm broken because I can't mm -hmm. be broken and still mm -hmm. be strong mm -hmm. and still be that person Even that, that I'm supposed to. Cringe. Yeah. Broken. So mm -hmm. I think what happens is once we take out the pathology of it mm -hmm. and realize it's just behavioral things that need some additions or subtractions, I think words, I think, take the sting out of um, therapy as a whole mm -hmm. that you're not broken but you're a work in progress right. like that? all of us because all of us could probably use some degree of therapy mm -hmm. even though we might go to our friends or whatever we need some help yes. so I think once we take the sting out of the word and destigmatize it then we would be more open but you know we ain't trying to be broken folks so we're not trying to go to therapy I know that's right now I would I would contend that and, and I'm sure this is debatable but I would contend that um, more uh, women of color would, would seek out therapists than men Definitely. I think when men um, have this tendency of feeling that we have to be strong in the face of adversity mm -hmm. and we don't want to see us broken. Definitely. Why do you think it's a, a, a huge disparity between men versus women? So to well, speak I think especially when we're talking about men of color, you have right. to realize how in our society as a whole, we haven't really deemed men of color as masculine. Right. So when you're talking about masculinity and what makes them be, you know, in control or strong, they don't want to show any deficits. They already have issues with, you know, monetary jobs, all these other things. So they don't want to seem like they're not strong and don't have it under control because they're supposed to be what the paramount strong pillar of the community and of society. So most of the times they don't necessarily want to go and say something's wrong with them. Right. And, and it, I mean, guys just don't say, yo, boy, you need yeah. to go to therapy. No, no. What do we say? Let's go to the bar. 
<laughs> let's go hang out. Look, you just need to drink. I mean, let's just be honest about it. So nobody wants to act like something's wrong with them. And then many times the behaviors that they're exemplifying are actually act. You know, people normal they 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 they, they, they normalize it. So if they're you know aggressive, oh that's what guys do. Or they're acting this, oh that's what they do. That's how they get it out. They drink, oh that's that's okay. That's what they do. So as we normalize these behaviors, they 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 kind of don't understand that there's something wrong with their behavior. So they say, oh I'm okay. Something's wrong with you for saying something's wrong with me. Mm -mm, fantastic now unpacking more of you okay right you mentioned (laughs) sex therapists or sexual health yes right Mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit more of that and jump and let's 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 dig deeper into that because that's dig deeper uh, yes because again (laughs) dig dig deep right and so when you even again going into like our communities Mm -hmm. right that's another thing we generally don't talk about too much it's kind of like you know taboo you know let's 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 delve more into that you know especially as it relates to uh the you know the challenges that you that you're working with as it relates to us Mm -hmm. well the challenge that i have in our community as a whole is the um the the myths and the stigmatizing and just really the hush the no voice about it i think what happens is i I like to tell people when i come and talk about it i'm like um i talk about sexuality awareness which is different than sex in and of itself Mm -hmm. and they're like well what's the difference well sex is an action you have to be doing something sexuality awareness is your belief about yourself your integration with the world around you and the world how the world integrates and sees you Mm -hmm. that encompasses sex reproductive health, STI prevention, and all mm-hmm. that, but it is, is not that in isolation. So mm-hmm. I think what happens is how we feel about ourselves and how we believe we integrate with the world and the world sees us dictates every behavior. Mm-hmm. And that is how we choose healthier decisions mm-hmm. and more um, conscious um, relationships. Um, people who come to my office most of the time are just, you know, normal people who are going about their lives. And then they come to the realization that, hey, I'm not living a life based on who I am. I'm living a life based on what someone else has put on me. Mm-hmm. And that could be having sex with multiple people. It can have be having, staying in an unhealthy relationship. All of these underpinnings come from our perception of self. So when I bring it to the table, it's like, okay. I'm talking about sexual health and wellness in its totality, but also incorporating sexuality awareness. So I'm building better people so that they can be who they are outside of anybody else agreeing with the decisions that they make. Right. Now, when we talk about, because you mentioned how we perceive ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But, but, you know, I, I just give a little push in that how we perceive ourselves is how others have imprinted that on us. Now, that's the way we think because they've been saying or feeling that this is how we are. So how do we how do we combat that or how do we work through those weeds? I think that's the beginning is the realization that what we perceive ourselves to be many times is based on outward affirmations and outward Uh, regards. Once we realize that when we look in the mirror and start labeling, because I'll have somebody say, you know, what are the positive things about you and what are the negative things? Okay. Most of the negative things aren't things we thought about ourselves. Most of the times those are things that have landed on us and we've had internalized it. So it's really changing the mindset around to tell people as people say things and think things, they can land on us, but they don't have to internalize us. You have to start letting them roll off of you and you have to start unpeeling the layers and realizing why do you have these thoughts about yourself? I think that's the hardest thing that most of us have is to realize that, you know what, we actually set the bar for beauty. We set the bar for acceptance. Mm -hmm. We do it on our own, but we allow other people to infiltrate us and make us feel less about ourselves. That's how we make poor choices, poor decisions, and choose unhealthy relationships. Mm, Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So how do we define, uh, how do we define sexuality versus uh, sexual like the, how we feel about ourselves sexually. Mm-hmm. How do we define the two? You mean like our sexual orientation, like Absolutely. what we're attracted to, right, our gender right. identity? Both. Okay, Both. so our gender identity is basically how we feel as far as how male, female we are. Right. Basically, if you know, we feel as though we're more masculine or feminine. That's more about our gender identity. Our sexual orientation is who we're attracted to, what we like, love, or we have emotions towards. So mm-hmm. that's our sexual orientation. And most times when I come and I'm talking about I'm a sexuality awareness organization or sexual health, people automatically go into LGBT. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. gender identity and sexual orientation. Okay, okay. That's one part of it because that's the concept of how people perceive and how they choose their relationships. Right. But a larger part of what I do is I intersect conversations around sexual health and wellness into every other aspect of our life. May it be behavioral health, may it be religious, may it be um, mental health or, um, or physical health. I bring those conversations in because you cannot treat someone if you're not treating them in a holistic manner. Mm-hmm. So if I'm coming to the physician and you're asking me, um, are you sexually active? And I'm like, no. 
and you're giving me stuff based on what you perceive that I'm doing or the mm-hmm. actions that I'm telling mm-hmm. you. And then you come and tell me, oh, Miss Lynette, I didn't tell him that um, I was sexually active because I'm not having intercourse. That's not what I'm doing. So language is key. Oh. So even when you're going to physicians and they're just assuming based on how you present what your actions are, then you're not giving them true information. I think it's more about incorporating language, incorporating spaces, and incorporating discussions and conversations where we can truly be who we are and our authenticity and actually express who and what we are so that we can get the true information. Hmm. Interesting. So let's talk about the actual act now. Okay, right? sex. Yes, let's talk about it, right? Yes, let's talk um, about sex. Because I, I <laughs> let's talk about sex, that baby. Song right? just I know right? it just popped in my. Se- <laughs> so let's talk about that, and because there's always, you know, even in in the product, and even what we do is something that we say is pre-production, is production, then it's post-production, mm-hmm. right? It's it's always the act before, mm-hmm. then it's something that happens, and then it's the afterwards, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to dig a little bit more into that so we got the the sex act Mm -hmm. right and then it's well we have something pre before the sex act Mm -hmm. right and then we have the act and then we have sometimes ramifications of those actions Mm -hmm. right so let's talk about those three right there pre how we think about it and go Okay, I think how we think about it is also, I think it's a, a conception that's, that's conceived from what other people say. Okay. And we talk to most young people and you say, well, what messages have you got about sex? Right. Don't do it. It's nasty. You're right, going right. to get pregnant. You're going to get an STI, all these type things. So I think most of the time it's more sex shaming. Uh-huh. So if you really think about most of the messages that we've got, we've never really came down to breakfast and somebody said, hey, how was your sex life? Did you have a wow. good orgasm last oh, night? God. <laughs> you know, like we haven't really, Awkward. No- we haven't normative, we haven't made a normalized conversation around sex sex should be talked about in a way that sex is pleasurable it's a Mm. pleasurable experience as long as what consent is on the table as long as consent is involved then sex is a pleasurable and natural experience so i think what happens is once we take away the negative aspect around sex then it'll be more pleasurable and we'll be able to talk about it in a more comprehensive dialogue but right now what we do is we'll think about it well, him and Hall, sometimes it's like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do it or whatever. Sometimes we have, you know, an, an, you know, inhibitions about it. Then we have sex. Sometimes, you know, it's pleasurable, not pleasurable. Right. But the key is the conversations afterwards. Right. If it is pleasurable, do we talk about it? And if it's not pleasurable, do we truly talk about it to the person who we're having it with or we talk about it to someone else? Right. And that's a conversation. And I laugh because I do ladies groups and I do men's groups. Right. People lie. You know, they lie. They lie. So when we lie and we aren't authentic again around conversations, then we make choices based on lies. So the girl, you know, will be like, well, you know what? I feel like I should have told them they should know. No, they're not going to know because everybody's body is different. Mm -hmm. Or the male might say, oh, well, you know, I was doing all that and I did. And they know they didn't. But how do we really have these authentic conversations when it's such a taboo and stigmatized topic? Wow. Speaking of taboo and stigmatized, right? (laughs) Let's let's talk a little bit about. Uh as a result of uh, an action that you're now, because statistically when we talk about like even the AIDS epidemic and just, the, you know, uh, contracting diseases, certain mm-hmm. diseases within the African-American community. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about that because these are numbers. Every time I hear about, or another report about the numbers, mm-hmm. they're going higher and higher and higher. They're climbing. And not only that, just not too long ago, you wouldn't even hear, have heard about, syphilis Mm -hmm. now i'm hearing about syphilis like the heroin epidemic now Mm -hmm. so what's going on out there that you know is is the the scale or the numbers that people are contracting these things are jumping and Mm -hmm. raising new or not new diseases i'm sure it's new and you know diseases that's kind of like you know merging Mm -hmm. but you have old diseases that's now circulating and coming back what's going on we're in a highly sexualized community and um, environment. Sex is everywhere. It's on the internet. It's social media. It's on every poster you hear, everything. But the conversations around sex and safe sex and making safer choice. If you really look at it, you don't need to see advertisements around HIV and AIDS like you used to all over the place. Because funding has been cut because it's not affecting the same communities anymore. Mm. So if you think about it, it's hitting 
heterosexual people and okay. the rise is going in heterosexual people more so than the so-called homosexual, as they used to say, um, community. So wh- why is rising in a heterosexual community? Is because people still have sub-communities. People are engaging in actions and um, activities that they are not bringing to the upper community. And I'm not even saying people having sex with the same partners. Right. I'm just talking about people having sex and not really discussing it with people so that they basically take the right um, precautions about it. Right. Again, if we keep stigmatizing silently and keeping sex a secret and not bringing it out to the open communication and conversation, that they're going to continue to rise. Remember, right now, our young people are at an age of instantaneous access. Yeah, it's an true, app yeah. to go get whatever you want. You can act like you're going to the poppy store and you can go get a poppy. OK, for what I'm saying, you mm-hmm. can go within a you can put it on your app within a five minute. I ain't even going to say five mile radius, Mm -hmm. five minutes away, put it in their phone, go meet somebody and act like they went to the store and came back. So we're Mm -hmm. not integrating realistic conversations around Mm -hmm. sex and sexuality and access. Back in the day, young people had to go get magazines, get videotapes. Mm -hmm. Right now they can look at it all day. Mm -hmm. But no one's bringing that conversation in and saying, hey, we need to address this in a whole different manner. This is like in their face. And they're engaging in these activities and everybody is like, oh, well, we don't want to talk about that. That's one of the problems. Also, marriages are not what they used to be. People Mm -hmm. are going out of side of marriages, having sex because it's like, that's what everybody is saying is is acceptable. You know, Mm -hmm. everybody has open relationships. Think of all the stars. Mm -hmm. Everybody has open relationship so they're like hey if I have permission or not I'm going to do it we're not engaging in authentic conversations around sex and sexuality Mm -hmm. so all of these things are rising syphilis is rising Mm -hmm. HIV is rising Everything is because people aren't using protection right. anymore. People got this, I, you know, when I talk to young people, they're like, oh, I can look at them and tell. No, you can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can, you know, and that's right, what, right, that's right. the misconceptions. Right, how many right. guys or how many girls you be like, oh, I can know. I can tell. No, you can't. You better go get a blood test with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, but people have this perception that they know what AIDS or mm-hmm. HIV mm-hmm. or syphilis mm-hmm. or the person who's sleeping with. No, I could have slept with 27 people and be looking just as fine tomorrow and with my church hat on. But you wouldn't know. Wow. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. So, so, wow. It's so much. And the time speed, it's time flies. <laughs> and so you're such a powerhouse on the mic. And you got bars. <laughs> Definitely yes. bars, right? That's and so I know that's the education behind you. <laughs> yes. So let me just try before I'm gonna try to get a few more questions in there okay. before I have to let you go. So let's talk. So now we spoke about the pre during the act and the post. How do we talk about not necessarily preventative measures, but what in the case that you do contract something like how now? I mean, you, you used to be that if you had AIDS, you know, it was a death sentence mm-hmm. pretty much, you know. Um, now people look at people like uh, Magic Johnson mm-hmm. and, you know, it's it's like he never did it, had anything at all. Definitely. So what what are the things that if somebody do, like all of our viewers and people who's listening, what are some of the things that if they do, you know, contract some of these, you know, contract some of these diseases, like how can they, you know, either rehabilitate or, or get cleared up or fix or okay. get rid of, you know? Well, I think one of the main things is that people need to go to the doctor regularly and get blood tests and be honest about their sexual activity. Right, right. When you go to the doctors, you know how they ask that little question, right. have you been sexually active? How many partners? And we all be like, one. one. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even have sex. I don't even have sex. And then they do it with the moms and or the husbands oh, or wives. Man. Only them. Mm -hmm. So they ask those questions because they run your blood test based on what you give them, the information. Uh So sometimes you have to be like, you know, can I talk to you for a minute Mm -hmm. by yourself about, you know, just some things I'm feeling. Don't necessarily have to say what it's about and say, hey, because then you can say I need the full gamut because they won't run every test unless you have markers to indicate your behaviors. So that's why I tell people normally you need to go get your blood test and say I need all of these tests run because they only do a couple and they won't just run an HIV test unless you ask for it. Also, one of the things that's out there when you're talking about exposure, and it's so funny, the person who referred me to kind of come and have this conversation, she works at the health department. So we were talking about PrEP, and people are like, what is PrEP? PrEP? And I'm like, people don't know what PrEP is. It's been out for years. So it's pre-exposure prophylactics. It's a medication that's out that people can take daily. And they actually started at Children's Hospital for ages 13 to something now. For people who are having sex with people who are at a high rate of having HIV or already have HIV. Hmm. So if you are having anal can I say yeah, yeah. Okay. If you can have if you're having you're anal, teaching, so it's okay. anal sex or um somebody who is using injection, you know, um, injectable j- drugs or have a high risk of this behavior, right. um, then you can get this pill, which is PrEP. 
and they've been giving it out to adults for years. Mm. And when I, it's funny when I talk to our, our community, people are like, oh, I never heard of it. Mm. And that's when I'm talking about integrating that conversation around right, sexual right, health right. and wellness, which I realize it has to be somebody like me to come our community and talk. Because mm. the people who they were sending, they just weren't saying in a way that people would yeah, receive it. Absolutely. And you have to kind of, you know, know our neighborhood to be able to have absolutely. the right conversation. And then there's PEP. Post exposure prophylactic. So back in the day, did you ever hear when people got stuck with needles yeah, or yeah. might have bought and they used to go to the hospital and take this pill? So within 72 hours, they can give you that medication and that can combat. It's not 100 percent. Now, the prep, if taken the way it's supposed to be, is 90 percent effective. PEP, it depends on um a lot of different um, variables. It's not as um, potent or whatever, but you can take that afterwards. So that's another thing that's out there. That's in the community. You can get it. Um, mm. Our insurance pays for it or whatever. So really? that's what I'm talking about. Things that so when when parents send their children to my offices for you know services and whatever, I always tell them about that when certain behaviors are expressed or when they're saying, oh, well they're sneaking out or they're doing this and you know they're you know fluid and stuff. I say, well, have you ever went to children's hospital or this place in the community and heard about prep? So these are the conversations mm. that every teacher every therapist and anybody who works with teens should know about but mm. they won't know unless they integrate conversations mm. around wow. sexual health and wellness mm. and wow. sexuality awareness so we have uh wow it's only like four more minutes left. this is crazy <laughs> we're gonna have to bring you back you promise to come back yes i promise to come back right, so i, I like to talk i got this one question i can tell me too <laughs> We all like to talk. This we talk weekly. You get it? <laughs> we talk weekly. All right, now. So, okay. So, um, before I let you go, you have to tell us because um, I know the Sizzle and uh, Clancy Lee Sparkle they have like teens. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And how do you have that uncomfortable conversation mm -hmm. with your teen about having sex? Okay, and it is uncomfortable. But, but what I tell people is that. Many times you can have the conversation, but you might not get the responses that are as, as um, authentic as they can be. So just like with anything else, parents can only do but so much and have those conversations. But I think what happens is you have to leave an open ended um, conversation where be able to receive whatever it is they say because once you hush shun or oh, judge man. them they're not going to talk to you again yeah, you can't say oh you don't do that oh nobody does that whatever they're going to say okay it. I don't and they're going to keep doing it that's and right. that's why no more secrets yeah. has these crucial conversations. We even have an engagement called cupcakes and crucial conversations where we have conversations with parents and young people. And we have like all types of get together. It could be a pajama party. It could be at the office and we have cupcakes and we have these conversations because what you have to realize is adults don't know all the answers either. Right. Cause you have to remember that even though you might have know how to fix a leak, you're not a plumber. Right. So if my background is in human sexuality. That's what I study and I research. So we have these open conversations. So go ahead and tell us, tell everybody, all our viewers for podcasters listening to everything. Thing. Tell them how they can get in contact with you, ask you some more questions. Okay, you can get in contact with me at no more secrets mbs.org. No more secrets mbs.org. You can call me. I answer all calls. I answer crisis and emergency. And if you just have a question, 215 485 7881. And we are located right in Philadelphia at 705658 Germantown Avenue, Suite 205. And you can contact us, like I said, on the web at no more secrets mbs. It's for mind body. Body sphere mbs.org anytime please hit us up that's what's up shout out to your wingman or wing woman <laughs> you know, executive sure. director there you go. Hey! shout out to the executive director y'all keep doing what y'all doing we love y'all for that you know what i'm saying anything to help the people man anything to help the people it's your boy charles greg with the beautiful lawrence and the beautiful classy ladies and you're listening to wppm lp philadelphia 106.5 fm we talk weekly after the talk and unfortunately we gotta go so we talk weekly after the talk is on iHeartRadio, radio itunes spotify and spreaker make sure you follow us on iHeartRadio, radio itunes and spotify binge listen to our shows like and follow us on we talk weekly facebook page and download the little tune in at look for wppm lp 106.5 fm and tune in every tuesday at 7 p.m we talk weeklies after the talk and follow us on instagram twitter and facebook at we talk weekly at charles greg at lauren underscore sizzle at sparkle price this one and subscribe to our we talk weekly youtube channel and if you're feeling catch every monday night 9 30 on concast 66 for rise of fires 29 and 30 and shout out to afro philly that's right mbg network week talk week weekly is syndicated you can find us in land baltimore birmingham chicago delaware houston jacksonville los angeles miami new york new jersey new york city philadelphia and all across the nation and guess who you look for we talk weekly oh that was a tongue twister but we gotta go we love you ladies and gentlemen make sure you keep watching and following us and we out here like last year hello Peace.